The following program may contain strong language and brief nudity. But don't get your hopes up. After all, this is Public Access TV. (coughs) This program was made possible from the support of VSA Texas. And Amera Group. Hi folks, I'm Gene. And I'm Dave. And we're the Gene Gene and and Dave Dave Show. Wow, Dave, this has been the season for art. I mean, uh, it has. It, it's really. Something. I mean, Austin is is really known for its art. I mean, there's artist communities all over the place, and you know, one of those artist communities happens to cater towards people with disabilities. Exactly. We had we were recently at a uh, art exhibit called Contours here in Austin, and uh, it was put on by the uh, Mouth and Foot painting artist uh, organization. I didn't even know that existed. I, I didn't either. I've heard of people painting with their, their feet and their mouth and um, a lot of times you can't even tell. It's just they do oh, such amazing work. Yeah, I- Incredible work, yeah. Um, but do we, we went to the exhibit. Here's a, uh, of course, uh, April from VSA was there. Um, you can see some of the folks from the gallery in this picture. And uh, here's a picture of me between Miriam Pere and uh, 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 Elena Tillman. Uh, all, all of these uh, women, very talented. Um, and uh, Sarah Parsons, here's a picture of me with Sarah Parsons, who lives here in Austin. Uh, she's going to tell us a little bit more how she got involved. But um, just just amazing pictures, Dave, to, to show the level of, uh, um, the high level that they're working at. Here's a picture of Miriam painting Glenn, the picture is, I, I believe it's entitled Glenn Close. Okay. And uh, <laughs> the level of detail is, is really incredible. But um, let's, let's get more from the artists themselves and the Started off talking with Sarah Jane Parsons. All right, here's Sarah Jane. Wow, Dave, did painting? Did I hear someone say painting? Painting today on painting the Gene and today. Dave show. Well, we are so lucky, Dave, to have with us Sarah Parsons. Sarah Jane Parsons. Did I get that right, Sarah? Yeah, Sarah right. Jane. Sarah Jane, and um, Sarah Jane is a artist with a disability who doesn't use her hands to paint. You use would, would you call them mouth sticks? To paint? Well, yeah, I've attached dowels to my paint brushes uh, just to give me a little bit of distance from my work. It also enables me to do a little bit larger work and I don't have to be right up in it. Plus, I came to realize, I mean, it's, it's, it was a process in figuring out what tools and how I wanted to use them. Uh-huh. But when I, my first brushes, I was going through brushes so fast because I didn't realize... I kind of clench my teeth oh, for okay. how hard I'm gripping them, and pretty soon I'm spitting out like lacquer and <laughs> wood <splinters>. chips. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And even still, these dowels that I put plastic tubes over, I replace those on a regular basis. Yeah, I'm sure. So, Sarah Jane, it's been a process for you, but you weren't always disabled, were you? I wasn't always disabled, and I never considered my som- myself somebody who could draw or paint. So. I became disabled when I was 20. I was rear-ended in a car accident. I was asleep in the back. But you know, it was the 80s, so I didn't have a seat belt on. Right. Yeah, a lot of us were wild and crazy back then. Exactly. So you learned to adapt um, through a spinal cord injury. I did. uh, And then 
how did you learn that you could paint? Or did you just... Well, when I was in rehab, you know, I was wanting to do anything. Um, I'm complete C4-5, so I was just wanting some muscles to come back. I was wanting mm -hmm. something to happen. Uh -huh. um, so at some point, my occupational therapist just stuck a marker in my mouth and it's like, try to write something. Wow. You know, so I spent the afternoon writing my initials and I was so excited. And once I had mo more mobility in my head um, and neck, then uh, my junior high art teacher took me to a, an afternoon painting workshop. And at that time then I was painting with the brush without the dowel super close to my work. So I did a very small little painting of some flowers in a vase, but I got excited about it and just started working on it ever after. Very cool. So it became your passion. It big absolutely, part of I, your life. I fell in love. Like, I wasn't one of those kids who grew up saying, oh, I know what I'm going to be when I grow up. Yeah. But this I fell in love with, and it's been amazing, and it changed my life. And it definitely changed my life as a person with a disability because I didn't know what I was going to do with myself. And this is something I can do forever. And as a matter cool. of fact, you just were in a show here in Austin recently called uh, Contours, is that right? That's right. It's ending with, today, actually, at 5 o'clock. With several other folks from, uh, what is the organization, MF? MFPA, the Association of Mouth and Foot Painting Artists. And we're an international organization, um, self-help, not charity. We are about 800 artists. Wow. in 78 countries worldwide. The United States, I believe we have 70 artists here. And we all paint uh, for the organization. And um, Either with your mouth or your feet. Either by, yeah, either by mouth or foot only. Okay. We're all painters who don't have the use of our arms and hands. And we submit work that gets turned into cards, calendars, mugs, whatever the publishing houses want to use our designs for. Oh, fantastic. And through that process, the association is able to give us some support in our work. Nice. So it looks like you've brought your table and some paint brushes. Would you care to kind of show us a little bit about how, how you do it? Yeah, I like to use watercolor and I do a lot of layers to bring out the nice dark rich colors. So some of what you'll see on here is still my sketch. And then some of what you'll see is just the underpainting, like the colors that's gonna that be the start, like the leaves that you'll see that are yellow are gonna be brighter and more up close looking. And the leaves that I've sketched in and painted in in blue are gonna be back in the background eventually. Excellent. Well, let's take a look and see how you do this. So usually, I do a lot, especially with How about if I get the flowers. Heck out of way? I do a lot of wet into wet. So I'm going to wet the paper first. Oh. Because I want to get a really nice smooth look. So if the paper is already wet, that'll help. I would have thought watercolors would be particularly difficult because of... So I use this, my little color tester. Put this on. It's like beauty being created right before our eyes. Today. Right in front of us. The next card. 
The well, next Hallmark greeting cards right here. Yeah, yeah. And then I feel like I've got too much color. I can go back, take a little off here and there. I'm already, I'm always battling my animals. For so, animals and organic, uh, would you say your subject matter is, is pretty much organic? Oh, I'm just saying, I'm always battling having my pets fur in my paint. Oh. <coughs> Ending up on my paintings. Um, but yes, my subject matter, which I've brought some other paintings if you want to look. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we have five of your paintings. I like to do portraits. I think I've been working up to portraits for a long time. So I would let that dry and wait and see what needs to be added. From what we see so far, it's beautiful. How long did it take you to get to this point? I've probably put about a good 12 hours into this, I would guess. Wow, and how long do you usually work on a painting? I try to paint every day. Oh, okay. Um, or at least six, probably six days a week. Okay. I haven't worked with other disabled folks other than to say, I never knew I could do this That's prior to becoming disabled. So it's not something that I adapted from mm -hmm. doing it with my hands prior to the accident. So for me, it's great because it's something I can do largely independently. And it's something I do tell disabled people, you never know. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. what you can do. Uh, I'm using a photo reference, actually, that one of my attendants took for me from some irises in my neighbor's garden on the corner down the street. And I took this, she took this picture for me last spring. Oh, uh, okay. And I love irises because they've got all sorts of crazy shapes and veins and they're kind of translucent and mm -hmm. that lends itself well to watercolor. Yeah, and different textures and such, and that is super. And I imagine the painting is rather therapeutic, I'm guessing. Absolutely. It, uh, it's, it's a kind of meditation in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. Now, if people want to find out more information on um, this organization, the MFPA, uh, uh, where would they go for that? We have a website, www mfpausa.com uh, people can sign up for our mailing list uh, to receive samples of what our publishing houses are, are printing hmm. um, and or they can just look at so you can order artists. prints you can order prints too. you can order cards calendars um, it's also possible to be put on our mailing list, and that can be done through the website as well. But also there's information about all 70 of us U.S. artists, so you can read all our bios, look at our work, and so that's learn more page. about the And if folks want to reach out, artists. if folks want to reach out to you personally, can they do that? Or would they need to go through the uh, Oh, no, I have my own website as well. Oh www.sarahjaneparsons.com Excellent. That's what we're looking for. Well, we're definitely going to have to visit that website. And as a matter of fact, here it is, kids. <laughs> All right. Well, um, anything else you can enlighten us about? So you said you do portraits. You want to do one of Jean and I sometime? I'd yeah. be happy to. That would be give awesome. Me, give me a good picture. We could picture we could feature that on our website. That'd be really cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Well we could have cards made. That so too. We, yeah. That sounds great. I could do it either way. I can do it like short and sweet, like with uh I like to do ink and wash. And I could do that 
real quick, or I could do something more detailed. Uh, Would you like we, to see any more we, of my other work? Yes, absolutely. Got a long the classic, <laughs> you can, you the classic the, Texas spring. You can tell this lady's from Texas, huh? Wow, that's watercolor? It sure is. That, is. Wow, that is amazing. Look at that Texas longhorn. Yeah. Seashells. I found these shells. Oh. I found these shells in South Carolina when I was nine years old. Wow. I did a, a study of them. If you go to South Carolina now, well, you'll find his water. Exactly. <laughs> I'm a little worried, actually. <laughs> Because of the hurricane, but... Uh, and then this is one of my first iris paintings. Oh, the early work of uh, Sarah Jane. Okay. Those are irises actually from my front yard. Oh, wow. Awesome. And so you took a picture of them and then you... Crystal actually photographed them for me. Okay. And then um, I took a... I took and combined a couple photos to do that painting. Mm -hmm. So a couple different. So do you usually colors. put the picture next to you and just paint from the picture, or you just look well, at the I picture just, and then remember it and paint it? A little of both. Yeah. I, d I put my I usually set my iPad up, so I have the photo. Okay. Um, okay. But I and I play with the color and do what I want with it to bring it out how I want. But there's definitely a level of working with the iPad and the photo. Do you ever paint on the iPad want. itself? I don't. No. Okay. I have yet to find a stylus or anything that works mm. for me with any of that touch screen mm -hmm. stuff. Crystal, you want to get in a shot here? Our, our television audience would like to know what you look like. Yeah. You mentioned your name, and uh, if you could move over this way a little bit more here, we'll get you. There we go. <laughs> There's Crystal, folks, helping us out with uh, photography and helping Sarah Jane with uh, with getting set up here. And we do appreciate you coming out here. And uh, we're looking forward to the next showing you have. Right. We'll certainly be announcing that on our show. Um, awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. And I look forward to seeing the Gene and Dave show portraits. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, amazing and, and in addition to paintings they do uh cards and and other things so right i think we should painting is not my forte but i tell you what I, I am amazed by these people that are painting with their their mouth i mean it just mm -hmm. they they do some really amazing work yeah um and, and of course if if you want more information on um on these artists or the uh MFPA, you can find them on a summary page uh, of our show. Just go to our show on, on art and you'll see it there. But um, here's a, let me just show you again. Here's a picture by Marion Perret. This is of uh, Glenn Close. Well, Dave, we're outside of the. Uh, Sterling Event Center. You got that right. Yeah, and we just uh, watched the BSA Awards, BSA Texas Awards, and boy, what a, a great group of people, some great energy, and man, who says people with disabilities can't do art? We've got a lot of talented artists here in Austin. It was such a pleasure meeting them and seeing their artwork. And uh, if you folks want to see more of their artwork, of course, you can make connection with them. Uh, to our show, we'll have uh, uh, Jordana, uh, a guest on our show, and uh, you can contact her, as well as some other people through BSA. But they did a super job. Well, almost been three years I had uh, yeah, yeah, me too. Oh, and Dave, I, I couldn't help but take a picture of, of ha or have someone take a picture of me between uh, Celia and Sharon. Uh, rush from nobility uh, to the leaders in the Austin community um, that, that we've been closely involved with. So yeah, and the art show was was amazing. Um, 
they had hors d'oeuvres. They had live music of a guy playing guitar that happened to use a wheelchair too. Yeah, um, yeah that was Wayne. Yeah, Wayne. Yeah. In fact, Wayne's got a closing music for the for the art show. Yeah. And, uh, Dave, we are lo- so lucky to have Jordana with us. We you know, are. Uh, she's an award winner. That's that's right. She won the Spark Award. The Spark Award from VSA for her uh, glass work. Now this is unusual. We've talked to artists before who do painting, but Jordana, you're the first person we've talked to that works with glass. Very cool. Very. It's a, a different way of working with art. It's a different a different kind of a different art form that I've worked with before. I love doing it. You know, how did so. you get started? How did I get started in the glass work? I was here, I, li- I lived here about six months and I couldn't find, I didn't know what to quite do with myself. And I have a horse and a lot of other stuff that I was trying to, I, I just moved here and I no longer had a job and I, I need to find something for me to do. And I was driving down where I live, not far, and I was driving past it, and there was this studio that was the glass work. And so I went in, and I talked to the guy, to my instructor, um, sorry, uh, Paul... Hello. So I went in and talked to Paul and Karen, and they're the owners of the studio, and mm-hmm. they said to me, this is something you can do, and I got involved with that, and I've been working there for about 10 years now. Wow, yes. just going into the studio. Just you, going into the studio. You found a new passion. Exactly. Oh, that's amazing. That is great. So it's helped me in many different ways. So I'm very happy to to be there, and, and they're a great group of people that are there. It's more like a family community. It's very feeling, oh yeah, I feel like a part of a group. Very cool. So it's been really nice to work with that, with them and everyone at the studio. It's been awesome doing that. Now, when we were in the green room before we came out here to the studio, you mentioned you started working with jewelry. Yes, so I to... um, <coughs> when I was younger, I did a lot of bead work, so that's how I got into oh. the glass work with the necklace pieces that I'm wearing, and then this is some of my work, and I really that's really where the passion came from. It's like I wanted to learn how to work with it in a way that was different than just be work so I can combine the two of them together so it, it that's a beautiful necklace you were thank you yeah this it. is a um fused glass art and it's a um dichro piece this is one of my my favorite I, I love working with dichro it's very shiny and very Colorful, and I will. I let. Um, as you can see, my outfit is very colorful. Okay. I just absolutely love it. You are an artist. Definitely. Yes, I am right. definitely. Yeah. Now you're also wearing a, a green necklace. A uh, green. You mean the. Oh yeah. What would you? Call that's part of the. That's part of the dress. A statement piece. Oh, okay. A statement. These. Oh, okay. That's part of the dress. So. Okay. And it's, let's see what else you you brought here. I've Got done. This is another one I absolutely love. Is this is called um, vitrograph, and what you do is you can pull. Uh, it comes out of a hot kiln, and it comes down, and you get to play with it hot. So you can put that into. This is what that will look like when it's fused together. So there's many different ways of working with. The glass and heavy it be very different. So, but this has been a great way of of coming out of my shell and 
being who I am and being happy about what I'm doing. So, the, um, I'm sure some of the folks in our viewing audience are a bit curious. Uh, you have a disability? I have a traumatic brain injury. I was hurt when I was three years old. I was hit by a garage door. It came down straight on my back. And I couldn't walk, couldn't couldn't talk. That's why I, can, I, I sound a little different. Is that I, I sound a little different because I had extensive um, speech therapy from the mm. age of three to the age of 19. I was in speech at least once a week. But I had extensive um, therapy throughout my life. So I was at the hospital nine, uh, like once a week to get physical therapy and then occupational therapy. So a lot of this work is going back to the occupational therapy because this is very much what all the, um, the therapists wanted me to do. They wanted me to work with my hands and be able to pick little things up. Like when I was first started out, that I couldn't pick up a, a quarter. So I gained a lot back through help with the, with the help of wonderful therapists. But they're not gonna be they're not here in Texas, they're back in Wisconsin. So I lived in Oshkosh, Wisconsin for 30 years. So that's kind of what's... So now we're, this uh, glass place here in Texas that you went to. Yep. They they weren't afraid of uh, having you no, in there with a hot glass. They would be with me, man. Yeah, I, I, I always get, I'm, I'm kind of nervous around this much glass in front of but, me because uh, you know, I shake, I don't want to drop it. And what, it. What's so nice is I didn't bring any of it with, it with me, but you can kind of see that with this is they have bigger pieces of this and it's very easy to work with. And what's so nice is they do... Uh, you can do as much as you want, or you can, like, I don't have a home studio. The studio I work at is, they have all the kilns, and you can work there and be in a a nice environment and talk and have all different kinds of friends there. But what's really nice is the environment is so great for me, a and I feel like a the part of the group, so and so more yeah. than just physical occupational therapy. It's exactly also kind of it's a, a mental therapy. Exactly, type thing. and yeah. and and what what's so nice is because I'm uh, do open uh, I guess we're calling it uh, speaking advocates. I'm I'm working through them, and they've been a really good organization for me to be working with because it's opened me up to new friendships. Uh, I was kind of quiet and I could only open up to my family and friends and not a lot of friends. I didn't have a lot of friends when I was younger. I just, it was just too hard. It was um, really difficult to make friends because I was so different. And everyone in the, um, in my town knew my history. So it was very difficult to, to get away from it. They were wonder, the adults were wonderful with me, but kids were kind of cool. Kids can be rough sometimes. Kids can yeah. be really rough, so. So how did you get involved with VSA? I was, actually, I, I had started my artwork, and I needed somewhere to sell. And uh -huh. I was, um, my mother was looking through the newspaper and said, there's a organization called VSA. And she said, they are having a art show. Do you want to go do that? And so I, I went out, talked to April, and April and I got talking about all my art. 
and she said we would love to have you come in and and do the um art show so i've been a part of that now for about nine years and that's during the holiday season that's during the holiday season and they do sell um 24 7 online i will give you guys a business card but i you can go to green glass at hotmail.com and that's where i'm located is green glass green glass grand 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 glass at hotmail.com and that's how we can email you that's how you can get a hold of me i will give you my business card when i leave okay and that's all that you can find me that way and And you have a website i have a website it's also the same name okay so exactly so rainglass.com yep dot com okay now tell us about some of these big pieces here that big pieces okay when i what i um when i'm sorry i'm trying to think about what i'm gonna say but um this is a very special glass my the studio i work at had a 10 they've been in business about as long as i've been doing glass and this is about 10 years they've been in business so they the company that you get the glass from made them a special glass and they're really into tie-dyed kind of stuff so this is their glass their special glass for their birthday so that after 10 years they made a special glass for them so that's what this is and it's pretty much all the tie-dyed look and I just add some little pieces there and then I have a this is kind this is the most um the most a lot of what I do I do a lot of stuff it's called a stack bowl and you put pieces on there and then it pieces down and you can make this any shape you want I wanted to do a cheese plate so that's what I did with this and I got some other matching pieces to go with this. So we, we, this is one of my pieces that I'm going to be keeping. So. <laughs> that one's not for sale. That one's not for sale, <laughs> but they, there's all different kinds of molds and different things. And this is another piece that I did that's kind of like this stuff again, but it's called Stringer. And you just lay it on, and it's done in many different ways. And you can do it flat or long stem. A lot of these processes, this process was one step. This was maybe one, the stack bowl was one, the create this, the tie dye look was one step. This piece that I'm going to be showing you that matches my outfit. Yeah. This is a um a, cap, a um I forgot the name of it, but this piece was done four different ways. So I I cut I I cut it all. So you make a a big block. And you get to cut it down and make it in a way that's very different. And this is how that was done. And I do go in and and they have a grinding area that you take these pieces when you're not... This was like the last step. But there was probably six, four nights. So four different ways of working with the glass. So it was, this was done by piecemeal. So you did different pieces each night and you got to get this piece after you're done. And then you go in the back and you grind it down and then you put it in a slump and you slump it down. So that's how this one was done. And along my jewelry, the, um, 
this piece in particular, that's how I was, I was doing that as well, is I put all these itty bitty pieces together and fused it all together and put, um, Tecta, so it's clear glass on top of all the other stuff and then it gets fused down and if you like it you can cut that up and they have a cutting area they have a sand blaster they have all these different areas so you can go in and you can use that for like half an hour and you pay for the time you're in there but it's absolutely wonderful to to kind of immerse yourself in in that world and it's been a wonderful outlet for me. Well, that's a it's an amazing story, Dave. She was just driving by this glass place yeah. one day and thought she'd check it out. And now now it's become her passion. Right. It's, uh, uh, it's amazing how people find their passions. Mm -hmm. And and she, so she's very skilled and uh, I, I wish I had some talent like that. But uh, <laughs> So you, you could also go to Jordana's website and uh, check out her other work. But, uh, yeah, or join in on the fun. Go, go to the glass gallery with them and, and learn how to, to do glass yourself. It may be your next, your next true passion. Exactly. You know, Gene, we keep talking about passion. We need to do a show on passion someday. Yeah. Oh, what a great <laughs> idea, Dave. We'll have to do a show Let's on do passion. That. Yeah. And, you know, and as we're talking about uh, passions, we can't forget about Glenn Towery. Oh, uh, right. Glenn Towery. He yeah. was at the ceremony, and we got to talking to him about how he copes with his his PTSD, PTSD. Mm -hmm. through art. Yeah, it's amazing. The art is very therapeutic, and uh, so it, it it helped him. Uh, it helped his wife. Uh, Interesting story. You don't want to miss that, folks. Okay. Okay. So, Dave, when we were at the VSA Awards, we happened to meet Glenn Towery, <laughs> and uh, Glenn was telling me about the artwork that he does. Glenn, you're a disabled vet, right? Yes, I am. I'm 100% disabled, but my mind is not. <laughs> yeah, but your mind's your mind <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And, and you've uh, made some art. You brought some art to the studio today. What did you bring with you? I brought a painting of the 369th uh, Regiment from World War One. It's called Ghost Patrol. Wow. And, um, you know, it's a painting that just shows the, that what these men went through when they served uh, over in France during World War One. They were a segregated unit. They didn't have, uh, uh, they were digging ditches for the longest. And then uh, some French generals came over and saw them and saw them working out, and they were like, well, what about those guys? And Pershing said, oh, those guys, that you know, first time somebody shoots at them, they're going to cut and run. But this is real American history, because the, the French general asked, he said, well, can we have them? And they said, yeah. He said, oh, yeah, sure, you can have them, but they can't fight in American uniform, you know, if you're going to put them on the line. They won't be embarrassing us. <laughs> <laughs> These guys turned out to become the most decorated regiment in modern warfare history. Oh, wow. Well, so your paintings have historical uh, relevance as well as um, ar artistic appeal. Absolutely, and um, you'll notice everything I paint is a clock. If it's not a clock, by the time I get through with it, it's a clock. <laughs> now, how did you get started painting clocks or clock faces? Well, uh, it was very interesting. My wife, uh, she got uh, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And when she got the diagnosis, my wife is a fantastic artist. She really is. And I knew how much joy that she got from painting. And so I wanted her to paint to keep that joy up to help to fight the cancer. And she refused. She said, no. She said, I'm concentrating on, on beating the cancer. So if you mm -hmm. want to paint something, you paint it, but I'm not painting. <laughs> and I hadn't painted at that time. And so I was like, wow. I was getting angry that she wouldn't paint because I wanted her to get well, you mm -hmm. know. And I was getting angry at the cancer, and we had this clock up in my den, and I asked her one day, I said, baby, I said, trying to encourage, why did, this is interesting, why don't you paint a clock, paint this clock? Uh -huh. And she said, no, and don't ask me anymore. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so <laughs> when she came home, 
You know, because my wife worked while she was having mm-hmm. treatment. Wow. And we worked different schedules. I had taken that clock down and painted it. <laughs> and I put a lot of attitude into it, too. You know? <laughs> <All right. laughs> I said, don't dare me to paint a clock. I'm going to paint this clock. So what'd she think when she saw it? She had so much joy. Oh, great. She loved it so much. She talked about that painting for hours. And I said, hmm, okay. So she came on the next day. I had went and bought and painted another clock. <laughs> so she beat cancer. And uh, she's the joy and pride of my life. She changed my life for me. And, uh, and you not, for hers, apparently. Uh, both of us, right, for each other. And now I am close to having painted 100 clocks. Wow. <laughs> so, ne- Dave, next time someone says, where does the time go, you can tell them it's at Glenn's place. Yeah. Yes, That's right. right. Or, or you can look me up online. Just ask for Art of Time. That's my website. Art of Time. Art of Time, Glenn Towery. And you can see all, you can see about, oh, I'd say 80 of my clocks. Okay. So, Dave, so the Gene and Dave show get the hundredth clock. Y- yeah, yeah. Well, well, you can paint a Gene and Dave show <laughs> I clock. I can paint Gene and Dave. Clock. There you go. Hundred clock because I like to paint portraits too. That yeah, would be awesome. That. We'd love that. I yeah, do that. Like you Gene. Know, but you got to give me a picture. I paint from pictures. On the okay. side of a hill or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Tell me what you want. Jumping you guys want to be bridge. parachuting in your wheelchairs? <laughs> or? Well, there's a thought. Well, now you've you've got some more paintings. You. Uh, you'd like to show us, Glenn. Tell us about some of your favorite ones so we could show them to the viewers. Well, right now, I, I paint in periods. I'm kind of stuck on the Harlem Hellfighters because this is the centennial. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Harlem Hellfighters. Harlem Hellfighters. The 369th Regiment were called the Harlem Hellfighters. Uh, that wasn't their real name. Their real name was the Harlem Rattlers, and their emblem looks like a rattlesnake about to bite. Oh, okay. okay. But they were named the Harlem Hellfighters from the German enemy that they fought. They named oh. them the Hellfighters so because every really time they mean. fought them, it was hell. They were tough, huh? <laughs> All right. I think, you know, I wasn't there, but yeah. it only makes sense. So, but I painted another one on the Harlem Hellfighters, but I also, I paint for my health um, mm-hmm. because I suffer with PTSD. I'm a Vietnam combat veteran. And I've discovered art. I've I've, stu- I've been off my medications now for two years, and I sub- I've substituted art. And for you veterans out there, and for you other people who have PTSD that's traumatic but not war related, art is a great way of processing what's going on inside without medications or with less medications, depending on what your needs are. With me, it's been without. And uh, so, so Glenn, can I ask you something kind of personal? Sure. I mean, if you're if you have the PTSD about war, why would you paint pictures of war? Because um, doesn't that just bring it all up back yeah, with yeah. you again? It should be unicorns well, and rainbows. Here's the thing for me: I served in the Navy, mm-hmm. so a lot of these uh, paintings that I'm I'm painting, I'm I haven't, which is interesting. I haven't painted anything Navy. Okay. You know, I painted Army, Marine Corps, like, but nothing, nothing Navy. Navy. Okay. Nothing Navy. All right. That so makes sense. What, I hadn't realized that until you asked that really? question. Really? Okay. Yeah. So uh, there's some form of avoidance, I think, for me, you know, from, from that standpoint. Sure, I would think there would be. I would think anything war, military related would, would be well, avoidance, but it's... It's good that you that you actually do it because it sparks conversations like this, mm-hmm. and other people can know that you know they're not alone. Oh, absolutely! And I don't just paint war. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I paint I paint a lot of things. I, I painted a, I do a lot of civil rights paintings. I document history and people there. The you know I paint the things that are important to me. Well, for me, one of the things that I dealt with when I was in the military was I dealt with intense racism. And so that mm-hmm. becomes a release for me to to paint uh, to paint some of the stuff that historically mm-hmm. that that happened. And but I also I paint happy things. I paint you know all, like this last painting I just did. Uh, it's called Art is Healing. All right. Break before we can see it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It's up on the screen. It's right up now. on the screen. Yep. And um, this painting is just about how you can use art, any art. To, to make you feel it's an abstract piece 
of art that I did, and I painted it so fast. Usually, some of my paintings, they may take me days, a couple of days to paint. Mm -hmm. I painted this in an hour. Oh, wow. And it was a joy. And I talked about, while I was painting it, I talked about why I was painting this part of it and that part of it. And, uh, talked and it, about it with who? Did, on video or? I talked about it on video with uh, a guy who wanted to come over and record me painting. Oh, all right. So uh, for, for another project, I'm also with the Warrior Chorus. Have you ever heard of the Warrior Chorus? Uh, no, I haven't. Have you, Dave? No. Doesn't sound familiar. Please no. enlighten us. Okay, so the Warrior Chorus, it meets at the University of Texas. And it's a bunch of, uh, it's a group of veterans who have all experienced combat. And one of the ways that we mitigate our feelings is we do a performance. It's based on Greek literature. So what we do is, we don't do Greek literature, but we'll take a character like, I'm taking Achilles. The God mm -hmm. Achilles, mm -hmm. All the right. Greek God, <laughs> and I'm taking Achilles, I would and I'm be Adonis for future reference. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> as long as you're not Ajax, what a character. <laughs> so, if you haven't studied Greek, if you go look up some of these terms, you'll understand what what I mean by Ajax was quite a character. Uh, so, uh, what we do is we put together at the end of the day, we put together these shows, the uh, performances based on our experiences out of what comes out of the workshop. Mm. And uh, so we'll be performing for the rest of the year. The, uh, the actual, uh, we're in rehearsals right now for our shows. And we have art, painting, uh, singing, acting, dancing. We even have a guy that is doing something with a summarized sword. It's we all veterans? It's all veterans. Okay. It's all veterans. And, and can the public view this or is Yes, the public, uh, our next performance is going to be November 15th at the Belmont. So at the Belmont, we're doing a fundraiser for the ABA Fest. Can I say that? You can. Um, our show is rerun quite, quite a bit. So in some shows, folks, this time might have already passed. Okay. But still, we can, if we want more information on that, would we go to your web page or you have a separate one for the We year? have a separate one. You can go to avafest.org. avafest.org. And what we're doing is we're showing veterans that they can heal themselves through art. That art promotes healing. We have so many veterans right now that are on all kinds of medications. And, you know, being a veteran that has uh, suffered with PTSD and been on medication, I can tell you personally how it's very difficult when you're already feeling the form of depression and then when you add a, some kind of a narcotic effect to that, mm. how it's sometimes, it depends on the person, but sometimes it's not the best result. Mm. And for me, it was, it began to be like, Okay, so I'm already depressed. Now I'm high. I'm high and depressed, or you know. And so now, without having to take the medication by substituting the art, my life is opening up for me, and I feel wow. a richer existence. That is so, awesome. So that is art really great. Is your passion? Art is my passion, and it's also my passion to share art, to share with the veteran community, their family members, and other people who are suffering traumatic events. To try art. And your wife. And my wife. You cured her cancer <laughs> through art, right? Well, she cured her <laughs> cancer through art, but I was there. I tried everything. And I was like, Father, I just met this woman. I don't want to lose her, so uh -huh. show me what to do. And But she's been um, in remission. She's been cured. I like to say that. She mm. has been cured now since 2010. Well, that's great Eight news. Years. Incredible. Yes. And, yes. Now, Glenn... Have you had any formal training in art? Now, art appears in myriad forms. Okay. So, uh, as a singer, writer, actor, yes. Okay. Now, that was taken away from me during a period of my life. And the only thing that was left for me, I thought that my artist days were over. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, but the only thing that was left for me was to try painting. Mm. And I, I actually said a prayer. I told my wife, I said, wow, I can't, I 
can't act anymore. I can't direct anymore. You know, these things because of my lifestyle and some mm. other things that mm -hmm. happened in my world. Sure. I couldn't do them anymore. And I prayed. I said, uh, Lord, you know, I really love uh, being an artist, but I can't do it. Can you provide something for me? I didn't mean for him to give my wife cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that. And I'm not saying to sure <laughs> case, I know, but then through that process, yeah. I started painting clocks. That's awesome. Very wonderful. <laughs> and I looked it up. I'm I'm probably I may be one of the only artists in the world who paints clocks the way that I do, but everything I paint is a, the, if it's not already a clock, it's going to be a clock by the time cool. I finish okay. it. All right, well, let's take a look at a couple of these clocks. Can you tell us about one or two of them? Okay, so um, see what um, a few of the brave is another. Like I said, I'm going through mm -hmm. this military uh -huh. period. Mm -hmm. A few of the brave deals with these men that you see here. I've got all of their names. Uh, this was during World War One. They had just won the Croix de Guerre, which is the highest medal for valor that the uh, French give. It's nine of them. And they they just, in my mind, I surmise, they they were given this award, and then they told them, say, come on over here next to this, this building over here, the, or this ship. Mm -hmm. I can't tell what it is that they're standing in front. And they kneeled down, and they took this picture. Oh, okay. And in the picture, you know, you can see each man's personality mm. it's like it's etched on their faces who they are and what they went through wow yeah. in order to earn those medals you know war is not war is a practice that as veterans i always like to say veterans can help us to get rid of war because they've been there we we call ourselves a modern society and for all intents and purposes we are i mean we've got elect we got computers, we got lights, we got, you know, conveyances like cars and ships and planes that fly. But st we still have not evolved our nature. Yeah. You know, we still practice this thing, mm -hmm. this, this ritualistic killing of our youth in war, you know. And we need to evolve beyond that. Yeah. We need to move to the next higher plane the next higher level and it's right. it's my hope it's my desire it's my you know my passion. prayer my passion <laughs> that we do so because this is a beautiful world and all these people on this planet are beautiful and they deserve to live in a place that's more like heaven than hell well said i could have said it better that pretty said. much sums it up for this episode <laughs> Glenn thank you so much for being on our show Gene. we do enjoy it and, and all the veterans out there and non-veterans can learn a lesson about art from you and, and about exploring their passion even if you don't have training in art um, maybe they, would you mind if they contact you personally and no they can contact me I, I love it when veterans contact me and you can write me at AVA Fest. G Towery at gmail.com. Oh, and visit to find out more about the AVA Fest fundraiser that's coming up. Visit www.avafest.org. <laughs> hope to see you there. Glenn, I hope you overcome your shyness someday. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Well, believe it or not, I was very shy, and then I met you too. And look what you brought up out of me. Well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, our passion. Follows through. Exactly. Thanks Thank for being you. on. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Uh, you're both very wonderful men. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Appreciate it. God bless. God bless you. Bye. <laughs> Amazing story. Standing on the mountain looking down on the city. The way I feel is a doggone pity. Teardrops falling down the mountainside. Been the times I've been here, been the times I cried. We used to be so happy when we were in love. High on a mountain of love. Night after night I've been standing here alone. Weep in my heart and cold gray dawn.
Being there for mom once a week is great, but she needs help every day. Dad needs a ride to the doctor, but you can't miss work again. And can mom afford to have help preparing her meals? We know what you're going through. Amerigroup has a plan for people with Medicaid that helps them get the services they need to live at home. Amerigroup, choose us for helping your loved ones live at home. Call 1-800-964-2777.